In the second part of the presentations related to crashing, we are going to apply crashing to the network schedule. First of all, you see in the table the result of our crashing calculations. A as a crash cost per period for, of 1.5k, B and G are not crashable, we have C with a crash cost of 3k, D with a crash cost of 1k, E with a crash cost of 5.3k, and finally F with a crash cost of 0.5k. We see that there is an order, we see F is the cheapest activity to crash. What we have to do now is see which of those activities are on the critical path, and then we can start with the crashing. This is the network diagram that we are considering. Our project is composed of the activities A to F, I to G. We have three parts as A, C, G, A, D, F, and B, E, F. And when we do the calculations, we will find that the critical part is A, D, F. And the duration is 20 periods, and the total cost of this project at this moment without crashing is 67k. What we have to do now is to indicate those activities on the board. First of all, we have A, which is critical, we have D, and we have F. Since we try to find an economic overview, we want to start with the cheapest activity and crash that activity. We will do that until we reach the minimum duration of the project and after that we will find a relationship between duration and cost. When we are crashing here, we can crash F with, sorry, F with two periods. So basically what I'm going to do is to crash F, I reduce it with two periods so the crash cost is or the crash duration is 5, and I can calculate now again the end time of the project, which will be 18 periods, and we count back from 18 periods. Now this also has an effect on the part ACG. What we have to do here is to adjust the values, because now we have to calculate back, not from 20, but from 18. So we find here 18, then we have 17, 16, and 12. So 12 plus 5 minus 1 is 16. Now what's also very important is that the slack here is reduced from 6 to 4. This is a very important step because now we know that when we crash F, we crash F with two periods, which means that the cost increases with 2 times 500, so we have plus 1k, and our project is now 18 periods with a cost of 68k. That's the first step in crashing. Now we'll go to the second step in crashing. I have adjusted the schedule so you see the new early start, early finish times for this project when I crashed F from 7 to 5 periods. The second activity that we can crash, the cheapest, is activity D. And activity D we can crash with 4 periods. So we're going to crash D with four periods, so we have a crash time of two. This means that we have to change the numbers here. Eight plus two minus one is nine. So here we get 10. 10 plus five minus one is 14. We find 14 here. Uh, we find here 10. So these elements change and this becomes also equal to 9. Here we get 9. 9 minus 4 plus 1 is 6. And here we have 5 and 4. The slack here goes to 3. 
And very important also, we come here to 14, we find here 13, 12, and 8. So this is a new situation. And what is important in this situation, what we see now, is that, oh, I forgot, the slack here also becomes 0 and 0. We have now two critical paths. We have not only ADF as a critical path, but we also have ACG as a critical path. And we see that the slack here is reduced from 7 to 3. The next step is to see what we can do further to reduce the duration. But now we have two critical paths, which means that we have to crash all the critical paths in order to have a result of the duration of the project. Now we crashed all the activities on the original critical path. We crashed A, D and F. So we have A is now we go, we crash with three periods. So it means that the crash cost here is 4,500 plus 4.5k, which gives us for 11 periods a total cost of 76.5k. It is clear that we are coming to a minimum duration. What do we have to do now? Well, we have to crash B, E or C and G to get a shorter period, but also we can still crash A with one period. So when crashing A, we will have an effect on this part and on this part. So that's already good. We have to crash A again. So what we're going to do now is crash A with one period. So we go to three periods. We find here three, four, eight, nine, and we find the duration of 10. What we have to do now is to continue again with the calculations. We have to find, and I have to complete here, five, nine, 10, and 11. Now we have to do, we have a duration here, which is 10. Here we have three, so we have four, four, then we have five, so we have six. Oh, we still have seven here because this part is still at the duration of 11. Now we have to choose B, we cannot crash. So the only activity we still can crash is E with one period. So we can crash E to three. We find in fact here five, and now we find 6 and 10, and we can calculate all the things again. 10, 6, this is 5, 4, here we have 5, 2, and here we have uh, 5, and we have here uh, 3, this stays 3, sorry. This is a mistake, so it has to stay 3 because we didn't change anything here. Now, what we have now is in fact all the three parts reduced to a duration of 10 and we find the final layout which we can then use in the next presentation. But first let's have a look at the calculation here. I take this away. So now I crash A with 1, and I crash E with 1. So with 1, what we have, we add here another A, 1.5K, and 1 times 5.3K, which gives us for a duration of 10, we find here 78. 78, 83.3 K, which is in fact the shortest duration we can find. If we now crash all the other activities, we will find a cost of 100 K, but unfortunately we cannot do anything with that anymore 
the duration will not reduce by crashing all the other activities. This was the second part of the crashing. In the second or in the last presentation, we will have a look, we will have a summary of this and we will bring the relationship between the time and the cost in a graphical form. Looking forward to seeing you in the next presentation. Thank you and bye-bye.